My dear brethren, good morning. Welcome to today's devotional. I hope that you are enjoying the reading of this beautiful book of Esther. We continue reading portions of this wonderful book where we see the providence of God, the care of God, how He cares for His people and He cares for our lives. When we do our part, when we align with Him, He always will act in our favor. That is why we do not have to be afraid of anyone or anything. Because if we are in order and in obedience, and we are obeying Him, and we subject ourselves 100% to Him, the Lord will always, always take care of our lives. So, let's reflect today on chapter 4, as of verse 10, in the book of Esther, we find the following. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a command to Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any men or women that goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live, yet I myself have not been called to go into the king's presence these 30 days. Verse 12, so they told Mordecai Esther's word, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than any other Jew, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Susa and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. What an incredible woman she was. As I said yesterday, she was beautiful inside and out, an unshakable faith, an absolute trust in the Lord. Now, if we analyze the books of the Word of God, the biblical story, we're going to realize that sometimes, in very specific moments and difficult times, when the people had, so, so to speak, the rope around their necks without knowing what to do, humanly speaking, impossible to get out of that situation of tightness, of a squeezedness, God always intervenes. And He raises a servant, he, servant, he raises somebody, an instrument through which God will surprise and act always in favor of His people. We have, for example, the case of Joseph. There were a tremendous food shortage. And there was Joseph, which had been prepared for years interpreting the dreams of the Pharaoh. They had taken all kinds of preventive measures so that that situation, those years of, 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 of lean, will not end up killing a lot of millions of people. We have also Moses. When the people are no longer uh, can do any more and they're so tired of the slavery and God frees his people using Moses, and he takes them out of Egypt with powerful hand. He leads them through the desert, and later on, with another name named Joshua, they manage to enter the Promised Land. We also have the prophet Elijah, at a time where the, the town was internally divided. In an, they adore Baal in one side, and they worship God in another one, and then God said, that's enough. Just make a decision. You cannot have a divided heart, and the Lord used in the mountains Carmel, the great, this man of God. We also have Daniel. When no one was capable of interpreting the dreams of the king, the Lord intervenes by giving him revelation and wisdom to his servant Daniel, and through him the Lord interprets those dreams that thanks to him many lives were saved. 
Now we meet again with a terrible situation. They're about to an extermination. The people of Israel are, is, is in danger. Millions and millions of Jews are about to lose their lives. But there is the Lord returning to act, in this case, through Queen Esther. A king, a queen who knew, according to the customs of the time, that she could not approach the king, even if he was his, her husband, if he did not call her. But her life was in a risk, but she was willing to perish. She's willing to die in order to save her people. A brave woman, a daring woman, like you and I have, all have to be today. Brave, daring wanting to do our lives, to give our lives for the case of Christ and to defend the gospel and the word of the Lord. But he asked for support. He asked so, so that they will protect them, that they will use them. And that's the way it was, because God will always answer the unity of his people. And we see that the people was not destroyed, that there was not extermination that was planned by God, once again, for surprise to many acted out of love to his people, to his children, and the people save their lives, and their enemies are the ones who lose their lives. What a powerful and wonderful God we have. That is the God that we have, the God of Daniel, of Elijah, of Abraham, of, Ed, of Moses, of Joseph, of Esther. He hasn't, his power has not diminished. He's continued to sit down, taking care of each one of our lives, no matter how small and significant details they are. The, what did the Lord say in his word? Come to me, those who are work and loaded, that I will give you rest. In one of Pablo's epistles, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but let your request be known to God. In other words, we can, in these hard times, in these trying times, rest in the arms of God. But don't feed your soul, don't feed your life with news from the world, with the internet. That, that's how a lot of people are. They have their heart divided. In one hand they say they trust and in another side they are full of fear and security. Do not feed your life from what the world says. Feed your life, feed your faith with what God says through his blessed word. Yes, we can find in the internet everything we want. That the, if this is going to do that, if the vaccine is bad, if the vaccine is good, if the Illuminati, the Mormons and the Freemasons and the Antichrist and the false prophet, everything you want, you will be able to find today in, in the internet. But when are you going to go in the pages of the Bible and scrutinize the sacred scriptures? Because that is the genuine information that you need. In this moment, more than ever, to live calmly and to live in peace and not be scared. Because the word of God says that he will take care of us and he will be with us until the end of the day, the earth. So if you are ever all day getting in the internet, pulling information that has nothing to do with the Bible, nothing to do with the Bible, it seems like it. But it doesn't. But the Bible doesn't need to be compared to the pages or the YouTube or Facebook or any other information. The Bible is genuine and it does not need anything. When you hold on to his word, it becomes a light onto your path. It becomes a torch in the darkness. It turns into a compass in a world that has lost the north. It becomes into a sword to reach. We can cut all tight to the evil forces. It becomes that bread that feeds your soul in the midst of so much hunger and so much scarcity of the word of God today. My dear brethren, Esther took refuge in God. They prayed, they helped, they fasted, and the Lord acted because Lord always is faithful to the prayer of his people. The Bible says, ask and you will find. They cry and I will answer to you. Doesn't it say in the middle of an, an, the anguish, I called the eternal one and he answered to me, Psalm 118. How many examples do we need? How many testimonies we need about the power and the authority and the mercy of God we need to live quietly in this society that is falling apart, that is breaking apart every day? We can still stand 
we can be joyful and in peace and in freedom and with joy and with balance because we know in whom we have believed. The ones who do not know, the ones who do believe in one thing and tomorrow in another, the ones who doubt, the ones who go straight from the weight of the Lord, obviously they cannot have the security that we have. But if we stand firm in the Lord, how Esther, like Mordecai, stayed, those who prayed and cried and waited on God, God will always to intervene in even though humanly speaking it's impossible there is no remedy there is no solution there is no escape my problem is too big I am the person with the most problems in the world no my brother God is much bigger than that God is much bigger than your need there what we have to do is feed our faith and not the pessimism and the fear do not be anguished do not worry but occupy in the things of the Lord. And when we become more in the things of the Lord, then we will not be worried by anything because they will fall this way and they will fall that way. But our eyes and trust are in our God. Therefore, my dear brethren, yes, we are in times of trial, but trials for what? No, or, or trials for everyone, for even the believers. It is time to demonstrate that all those years that we have spent in church and all that we theoretically have known has been useful. We can live from theories and good intentions and good words of plans and projects. At the time of truth, that's useless. We have to go down to the reality. We have to go down to the action. Trusting in the Lord, as Esther trusted in the Lord. They fasted and they saw the glory of God. And it has always been that way. Because there are spiritual laws that work. And when we abide by divine laws and when we submit to the will of God, He will always surprise us. Therefore, my dear brethren, how beautiful it is to know that we can enter into the presence of our King when we want and where we are and in the situation that we are. At that time, you could not enter in the presence of the King if he didn't call you. You were in danger. He could have killed you unless the King extended the scepter. And it was like a sign of forgiveness. Come to me with confidence today. We can confidently approach our God the Romans chapter 5 says that we can confidently enter freely until the very presence of God because the way is open through, his, through Jesus Christ. So take refuge in God. Cry out to the Lord. Stop talk, looking for more help in men. Enter in your room and your father who hears you in secretly, he will reward you in public. Stop calling this and that, asking for money, asking for money to another one with crying and tears and poor of me, nobody understands me. Let stop wasting time and invest more time in the Lord and your answer and your miracle would probably would have come a long time ago. But you're looking in men the answers that only the Lord can give you. I encourage you today to all of you and to myself that we keep believing in the Lord. We keep crying to our God because the Lord will always intervene in favor of our lives. Let's pray this morning, my dear brethren. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this privilege that you give us to begin a new day with you, Lord. Thank you for the encouragement, for the strength that you give us through your word, for those promises that are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, remove all doubt, all regret, all whining, all complaints from our hearts and that we can do like they did in Esther's time, cried out to you, and they sought with intensity, with fervor, with true desire, and, and they saw the glory of God and the answer to their prayers. Lord, act, act intervene, Lord, intervene in favor of us. Remove, Lord, all regret of us and cry and whining and that this day we remain in you and in your word bless and visit your beloved church today in the blessed name of Jesus amen and amen well we continue to enjoy reading this beautiful book of Esther if you have never read it I encourage you to do so you're not going to have a long time because it's really a short 
uh, book, and you're going to enjoy very much the, the reading of this book. Tomorrow we'll return to reflect on other important points of this book, um, of Esther. In the meantime, read and meditate and reflect in every word, because without a doubt, God is going to minister to you and bless you through its pages. May the Lord bless you. May you have a day full of peace and the blessing of the Lord. Blessings to all.